Okay, we're back. Before we get to that sheriff's thing, I was just going to tell you something. It came to me like a, uh, an epiphany, okay? Yes, okay. The, yeah, the, the thing we talked about last week was, and it's been covered by a lot of editorials, that the effect of not affirming our Supreme Court justices would give Governor Scott the right to appoint oh. justices. And you, actually, and you, you made this point. It would give him the duty. I mean, if they get kicked out, there's a process yes. whereby the Judicial Nominating Commission sends names to the governor. It's his duty to pick one. I but mean, here's... And, and so, yeah, and, and Carl Hyacinth was kind of blaming the governor, but, but apparently the governor has not come out... He hasn't done this. this. This isn't Governor yeah. Scott. You know who's behind it? The Florida legislature. And here's the key. It's in Amendment 5. If they pass Amendment 5, okay, and they don't retain the justices, the Florida Senate will take over that appointment process because they will have to affirm whatever Governor Scott does. They don't like the appointments Governor Scott's made. In my opinion, his appointments have been fair. He's appointed good people. They might be conservative. Doesn't bother me a bit if they're honest and straightforward and they follow the law. Love them, okay? That's the people we want. We do not want Jeb Bush hack political appointees. Not that they all were, but most of them were. We don't want that. Governor Scott hasn't done it. But here's the thing, Bill. With Amendment 5, it will switch that power where the Florida Senate can override that or can control that appointment. And so Good what point. is this really about? Yeah. It's the Florida Senate against Scott and against any governor. Yeah. This number five, of course, should be voted no overwhelmingly like all the rest of these amendments. But anyway, well, the legislature it has been going on for years. They don't like the strictures put on them where, where, where the court decides if some of the stuff they're doing is crazy and unconstitutional. They don't They like want it. to do it anyway. How many? And it's, it's yeah. so important. The, the founding fathers understood that men weren't angels, and that's why we need checks and balances. And we've got checks and balances, and it's working. And getting rid of the, the justices that tell the legislature what they need to be told, no, this is wrong, you can't do it, is a very bad idea. And public opinion polling has our justices and judges at the highest level. It has a legislature at the lowest level. Okay, for good reason. The lowest level people here in the legislature want to control this high level organization of our judiciary, and it is poisonous. This legislature, and we said this last week, we'll say it every week till the ballot comes out, until you vote. This is disgraceful what the Florida legislature has done to this ballot, made it it's unreadable in many of these constitutional amendments. And this was on, t on this afternoon on a talk show, a radio talk show. We heard this, where the talk show host said he'd been called by a legislator, but he hadn't given his name. And this legislator said the reason the legislature wants these constitutional amendments is because it's hard to pass laws. And that if you pass a constitutional amendment, you don't have to worry about passing a law. That was his explanation. And you can pass a constitutional amendment by making something that sounds good on its face. Yes, like religious and, freedom. Right. Some yeah, there's a religion. Are, now, yeah. who is not for religious freedom? We're all for religious freedom. But yeah. what it's really about is overturning the provision in the Constitution say, that says we're not given any money to any religious organizations. And they want taxpayer money to go to religious schools. It's yeah. a stealth amendment, like a lot of them are. It, it, it sounds good, but. Yeah. It's, de you know, it's deliberately. I'm going to say it like, like I think it is. The Florida legislature and the people that drafted this have deliberately misled the public to try to get this passed because of the special interests that are behind it. That's what's going on with your Florida legislature, and not one of these legislators can respond to any kind of public debate about this nonsense that they put on the Florida ballot, all 10 of them. They don't have to. They don't That's have the to. beauty of it. They don't have they don't, to. They, for, for, for a lot of the things that wind up on our ballot, they could pass a law. Rather than enshrining it in the Constitution, there could be a law. But either they can't get it passed or don't want to support it or something. That brings me to, I've got a whole bunch of quotes which I will not read to you. This is from Thomas Sowell, the economist, and we're talking about politicians. No one will really understand politics until they understand that politicians are not trying to solve our problems. They're trying to solve their own problems, of which getting elected and re-elected are number one and number two. Whatever is number three is far behind. It's the only thing that explains politics. What explains our legislation is lobbying. It's not logic. It's not common good. It's just lobbying. Well, common good is an exception, because I think sometimes common good laws get passed. Sometimes. Sometimes they do. But most of the time, it's a function of who's got the cash 
and who right. speaks the law, who's got the Listen. bundle of the checks, and who's pulling the strings of the legislators, and not all of them. Again, it's unfair to say that they're all that way, because we have honorable people that have served in our Florida sure. legislature, uh, many with distinction, but we have a lot of people do you know a third, only a third of the legislators are lawyers? Now, some people... And a lot of people think that's too many. A lot of people say that's too many. The problem is, if you have no legal training, you really don't understand the impact of some of the laws that you think yeah. sound good to the special interests that and, want you to propose And them. you've got to rely on staff. And you do. The, the, the idea that, well, when you ran for office, somebody said, well, he's a lawyer. Well, why should training in the law disqualify you from being a lawmaker. How stupid. Well, it's the general distrust of lawyers. Yeah. Lawyers have earned that distrust, I mean, unfortunately, and they're painted with the, with the brush of dishonesty, and people don't want dishonest people elected to public office. Well, but in terms of the legislature, the Florida legislature especially, um, it, it is really terrible right now. And I don't I know what the solution you. is. I, I have no you. idea what the solution you know, is. I think that in, in, in our experience, and we've both been lawyers a long, long time, but by and large, there's some lawyers we think are disreputable and we don't trust them. They're pretty honorable people. Yes. Really? Yes. I mean, I can send money to a lawyer I don't know. I just know this person's a lawyer, and, and, and that's, that's going to be okay. I think it may be because lawyers are representing rapists and criminals, and people just don't understand the role of criminal defense in our society. They don't. And, and no. there's no respect for it because nobody wants somebody to get off on a, quote, technicality, unquote. And it's those technicalities that are, in, 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 are actually constitutional rights that we mm. need to protect for me and you and your families. It, it's, it's no. Does the does a criminal defendant benefit by const the same constitution? Of course, but we don't give it up because they're they're taking them today because they'll take you tomorrow. So we have to fight right. for those rights for the lowest person in society, these, and we do. These technicalities are what keeps. The, your government from running over you. Indeed. And the government's done a lot of running over you lately, like the, 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 the warrants and tapping your phones and the Patriot Act and all that stuff. I, I think that the, the national government has really done a bad job with, on the Fourth Amendment. They have. And, and, and mislabeling these laws so that when you oh, read the name of the law, yeah. it's the exact opposite of what the law does. Uh, you, 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 we had a more local point. You had yeah. some, well, something we've got, about a budget. Well, this was, this was on the front page of the paper, and I find this interesting. And also, I've just, I've just become very interested in the sheriff since he showed up with that Gilbert and Sullivan uniform and the thing around his neck. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know that it's necessarily hurtful, except that it indicates maybe a certain attitude, which is also reflected in this letter. The, 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 there is a dispute going on between the sheriff and Mr. Oliver, who is the, the county administrator. And so, and this is about $353,000. And here, here's what's going on, as I get it from the newspaper. Um, Can I say something about Oliver before you go on? Hmm. I think he's done a great job. I hear no criticisms of him. I think he's a very sophisticated person in county administration yeah. and has done a decent job for he sure. Might, he might not keep his job. I, I know. It's just awful that they have this political maneuvering all yeah. the time. But I think on the whole, he's done a, a, a good... We have great people in the county government. In my opinion, if we could just keep the county elected officials we, out of the way, yeah. we would be fine. I mean, the county commissioners, we could you know, yeah. keep there, them... There are, there are a lot of good people in, yeah. in public service. Uh, sure. Absolutely. Well, every, so. a, apparently there, there was an agreement that everybody would take a cut except the sheriff's department, which would leave its budget at where it was is approximately $78 million. Um, and this is, what, this is my take on the newspaper article. I don't have a lot of inside information. So there was $353,000 that the sheriff wanted put back into his budget above what he got last year because he has to take some hits because of grants or something. And... Um, he, Mr. Oliver wasn't doing what he wanted, so he wrote a letter, and he, this isn't the first time he's written a letter about an administrator, and it says you can't deal with something who doesn't keep his word, and he's just really bashing Mr. Oliver over this issue. He's done the same thing with Administrator McDonald. When, when it wasn't going his way, when he wasn't getting an agreement, I just can't deal with somebody who's uh, d uh, d dishonest, and uh, he, he wants his money back. And here's the part that I really don't like. I mean, I... 
Maybe there is some misunderstanding. Maybe it's not his fault. Maybe his, of all the agencies, he ought to get more money. He says, I will conclude with reminding all of you that the five deputies shot in the line of duty serving the citizens of Escambia County and just of, of, reminding you of the five deputies shot in the line of duty serving Escam the citizens of Escambia County in just the last two years, allowing our budget process to dissolve, devolve, blah, blah, blah. That's playing this patriotism. I mean, this has nothing to do with the deputies being shot. Yeah. I don't know what he's supposed to do with this money, but that is a very cheesy comment. I agree. Yes, he, he, he's yeah. using these deputies who were shot in the line of duty and, and are uh, validly to be applauded for sacrificing for the citizens of Escambia County. He's using them to push his budget, which, by God, he gets to spend however he wants, and he doesn't want any cuts, and he just wants to bully everybody around. And if you don't agree with him, he's going to write a letter saying, hey, just, you're just dishonest and I can't deal with you. Once the appropriation is made by the Escambia County Commission, because he's a constitutional officer, he submits a budget, but he does not have to comply with that budget. He doesn't have to do what he said he's going to do. I mean, he, he can do whatever he wants. They write, literally write a check to him for $78 million, and they say, we, we trust you to spend it the way you say you're going to spend it. He has complete discretion over it. But I want to go back to the 5% cut. Every single county department, all the constitutional officers, everybody across the board had to cut 5% meaning some employees didn't get raises, meaning uh, certain projects couldn't get done. I mean, everybody is pitching in with one exception, the sheriff. The sheriff will not pitch in. He will not reduce his budget. He will not play ball. Okay? Yeah. So, and, and what you hear is, well, we well I'm going to have to cut the public information officer whose job is to make me look good, or I'm going to have to cut some ceremonial stuff. Oh, we're going to have fewer deputies. You know, the threat is, oh, you're not going to be safe if my budget gets cut. It's cheesy. It's a huge portion. We'll look at this um, in time. It's a huge portion of the county budget. It's a huge portion of the taxes that you pay. And the threat is always the same. Unless you give me more deputies, more cars, more money, you're not going to be safe. And I've, I've heard comments like this. Well, do you want me to stop patrolling in your neighborhood? Things like that. It's like, no, what we want you to do is we want you to be more efficient. You ran for office on the basis you were going to reduce the amount of money that was being spent at the sheriff's office. That has not happened, period. It has not happened. Now, if it's going to happen, then it's going to take public well, officials it's with It's not going to happen to anytime soon. Not going to happen anytime soon. In fact, he wants another 353000 over what he got last year, right? Right, right. And, and over what he apparently, according to the suggestion in this article, agreed to. Now he wants more, and because Mr. Oliver isn't playing ball with him, then he's just somebody who can't be trusted. I can't deal with somebody like that. And he's our sheriff. If you look at the ballot, it's Sheriff Morgan and nobody. So he's... He's the sheriff. He's the sheriff. Well... You know, when you say we have an agreement over money, the first thing capable and competent people say is, where is the written agreement? It's like saying, I had an agreement with my brother-in-law, and you promised to give me $152,000. And the brother-in-law said, I didn't promise you to do that. I thought you were going to give me $152,000. And so they get into an argument about who said who about what to do who. So, Wait, it's money. It's our money, by the way. Where is the good accounting, the sensible business practices? Where is all of that? If you claim you're entitled to additional money, where's the documentation for it when you're accusing other people of saying things that aren't true? Many times, these differences arise because people want to have oral communications. They don't want written communications. They don't want something you get from a public records request. So what happens when you have this loosey-goosey stuff? A misunderstanding, a, 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 purportedly a misunderstanding. But to blame Mr. Oliver, whose job it is to protect our money, okay, through the county commission, to blame him because you had an oral understanding that nobody really understood that exceeds your budget? What is this about? I don't know. We get equal well, sides. Can't, so. can't, can't somebody audit the sheriff's department and see where's the money's going and yeah. where's the where's the fluff and waste and the sheriff's department can be audited we used to laugh i think it was a 
our, our former sheriff uh, McNesby. I think it was his brother-in-law that did the audit. I'm not sure. I know who does the <laughs> audit now. Yeah, there was some there was some concern about that at one time. Although I think the, the brother-in-law was in charge, but he didn't actually do the audit. Somebody else did with his company or something, and they tried to make it as, as, as fair, I guess, as they could. But no, there is an audit. But here's the thing, Bill. The sheriff can do anything he wants with the money, period. The only limitation he has are legal limitations. Once, he, once that budget's approved, it's his to spend the mm -hmm. way he wants. He's not held to a line item expenditure based on right. the budget and, that's And maybe submitted. he shouldn't be, but the public ought to know where the money went. A you know? comprehensive audit would be very good, comparing and it to other communities. How many helicopters do we need? Well, well that and, kind of and, stuff. and comparing it to other communities in terms right. of staffing and that sort of thing. Um, and how many administrators and, and, do we have who helped with your campaign, who are now in nice jobs with good salaries? Well, that's to the Victor Gouda spoils it. I think it happens in all public officials. And That's and fine. All. We should know about it. We should know. The public should know. All right. Well, we don't have anybody else to bash, and we ran out of time. So we welcome you to come uh, back with us next week. Call us with any observations about anything that we've said here. Many people do. Send us emails. We read them all. So we hope you'll join us again. Good night. Good night.